Today, it gives me great pleasure to catch up a former Island international player and now coach. Oh my word, he's a wonderful mind. You're going to love him. I'm going to love him. Ladies and gentlemen, start the clapping, screaming and cheering and welcome Kieran Campbell. Yes, please. And then to make sure we've got a nice blend of comedy, rugby and analytics. I got my guy, one of my dudes, one of my close homies, the man who knows everything about rugby. Don't tell him I said that. Benedict. Hey, what's up, Kieran? Dalen Oliver here. I'm stand-up comedian and a massive rugby fan. I have never played rugby in my life. The closest I've come to playing rugby was passing a ball to Dwayne Vermeer and when I saw him at the airport. <laughs> but uh, I'm looking forward to catching up with you, a former international, a current coach, and just an all-round great human being. So thanks so much for making time. Oh, no, great to be here, guys. Um, so, you know, <clears throat> just started started the role this year. Um, probably... Uh, a smile because it's it's a big flip for me because I was I was doing skills and attack um, last season so probably though probably's given me a nice insight into and how we need to defend um, yeah so as you said there kindly um, played a little bit of international rugby um, as a as a nine and also played uh, sevens with with Ireland internationally as well so pretty pretty broad broad basis of of uh, experience there. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, also fortunate enough to have played with a lot of South Africans as well. So um, got a nice insight into how you guys see the game too. Before we get into um, the serious analytical rugby questions, I just want to put my hand up and ask everyone over here. Can we agree that Kieran looks like the George Clooney of rugby? He looks like George Clooney's brother. I'm looking at him thinking, Bruh, this, <laughs> this is George Clooney. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, uh, I haven't heard that one before, but um, yeah, I, I, I don't mind accepting that. That's that's okay. That's not a bad look to be taken oh, wow. on. George Clooney. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't think my, I, I, don't, I don't think my wife sees it like that, though, so we, may need, we need to bring her in on this. <laughs> well, uh, quick question. For, I, I'm going to start here. Kieran, you're a scrum up. I mean, yeah. scrum ups are, tend to be the smallest guys on the field. Now, you are coaching defence as a scrum up, and the general consensus is most scrum off don't want to tackle. So walk us through how you are confident enough to to start coaching in defense as a scrum off because it's it's very rare. Let's be honest. Yeah, um, I think so. But um, I, I guess scrum halves have a pretty broad understanding of the game too. You spend a lot of time um, with forwards um, and and you're the connection obviously to to the backs so you've a pretty good understanding of what both both units are delivering within yeah. the game um the other thing is i think scrum halves too from from my perspective you've your forwards particularly in your interior defense so so from your your rock building out yeah um they're so important to generate in the i suppose that the line speed and the, and the and the initial um collisions within your D so having a having a close understanding of them what that looks like from having to marshal them from behind um and then being able to also understand from a back's perspective what's required by system and and um the different types of tackle they have to deliver um you probably have a pretty good insight as a nine as you know uh, as you guys are well aware most of them are like little uh, napoleons as well and i've no problem uh, <laughs> voicing <laughs> voicing up to let them know what 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 what's um what's required um okay wait well, kid before we go anyway you mentioned uh, you gave the napoleon analogy for our scrum offs you're working with scrummies from all over the globe i have one question do all of them have add do they have this in the Jack Russell and Pitbull. They're just aggressive, but they're sharp. When do they sleep? Where do they get all this energy from? Well, I think the thing is as well, you've got to remember is that you've all got the small man syndrome as well. So there's always going to be anger there. <laughs> That's always going to Fair be enough, on, yeah. underneath the surface. And um, yeah, I think I think as Benedict knows, even with myself, it, um, that there is a fuse. And I think there has to be. Yeah. Um, I think... It's, uh, particularly defence requires a certain level of emotion um, yeah. and 
you know, I'm sure if you ask the boys, there's there's times that they would uh, be pleased if I keep that emotion to myself. But um, I think it's important, you know, it's it's integral to to how you how you want your personality to be reflected in the D. Um, so that 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 necessary emotion has to be there. And, and let's be honest too, like it's you know, rugby is a combat sport, so. Um, it really doesn't matter what side of the ball you're on now, be it attack or defence, collisions dictate your game. I mean, so when you talk defence, I mean, you, you, you'll you have systems, you'll have different things on, on, on a defensive setup. But if you if you were asked what are the three non-negotiables in a defensive system, what would they be for you? Um, I think first of all is, is connection. So, you know, I talk a lot about a, line, a connected line speed. Um, you know, that's that's really, really important to me is we give no one easy access into seams. So, you know, i.e., I suppose in layman's terms, um, creating triangles in our D um, for people to, to get in and outside of, of, of the tackler. So it's our connected line speed. Um, where's that driven from? Is driven from watching the ball. So, you know, that, that would be really, really strong for me is that we don't have players who are guessing. So our collected line speed comes from watching the ball, which may be different to some viewers of this who maybe have heard a lot about watching the man. Um, instead of the ball. Um, the other thing, which is a, a prerequisite for me, and you know I've been talking about it a lot, is it's non-negotiable living in the life cycle of the tackle. So we try to build our double shots, which obviously have a big, big effect on the opposition. And then the last thing then, which can be built around that, is just our speed, our race, our speed to set. So, you know, how, how quick can we be set before the opposition to allow that life cycle to keep coming again? So, you know, getting off the line, building our double shots, and then how fast can we be set again to go? So if you're looking for three pillars, um, they would be the three sort of baseline pillars. I think I was talking to, um, I hope he doesn't mind me saying, I was talking to Joey Mangala um, at the Sharks um, just recently there. And, you know, I won't give his stats away, but, you know, Joey was explaining to me how much or the percentage of tries now which are coming from, from transition. Um, and turnovers so you know it's, it's really important that your D is also connected to your attack in the respect of like you, you, you're trying to force your position to give you the ball back as quick as possible to transition yeah. so that I hope that answers the question Benedict but that's that would be kind of how I build uh, the D I like you I like you mentioned transition do you do you think transitions are also probably the the toughest toughest block to defend I mean Think about it from this point of view. A team has been attacking. Okay, the defense wins the ball back. That team that was attacking now has to get into position. You spoke about a race, and they have to shut that down. And they need to have that interest to say, oh, we lost the ball, but now we need to get the ball back as soon as possible. Do you think transitions are the most difficult um, zones to defend? Because you you bring in the kicking game. A lot of kicking's done. Um the, the, the teams recover the ball and they want to attack immediately. So you've got transitions and people are in different zones and they need to get into a defensive set. Do you think transitions are the most challenging aspects to defend? I think so, because in, in respect to the transitions, like how quickly can you get back to your defensive shape? So what do transitions generally come from? Turnover and attack um, is generally where it comes from. So first of all, You've got that mindset of how do we get back to defensive shape? How do we kill the opposition quickly to allow us to get to our defensive shape quickly? Um, and then it's about regaining control. So you may get back to your defensive shape, but remember they still have momentum. So how quickly can you then regain control? So we already kind of alluded to if, if if you're not in position to create connected line speed and create those two man shots to to really um, give you time within the tackle to slow the game down. Yeah, then your defensive shape is always going to be under stress. Kieran, I, I genuinely appreciate the sincere in-depth analysis that you're busy giving us into the coaching side of things. Because as a fan who sits on the couch and on the other side of the world, we're not always aware of this. But what I'm very interested in is the way in which you navigated your life from your playing days into your coaching days. What was that like, especially working with the new generation of, of rugby players and not necessarily the, the old school one that you come from? Ireland's very different in that it's probably a little bit, I'm not sure how the franchises work in South Africa, but in Ireland, like the young lads, like it's their dream. Like they just want to play for their province. They're so attached to yeah. it. It's where they grew up. It's where they always had the the hope they would play. So when you see them get that dream and get to realise that. And then the other thing about that as well and is the, the, the 
the crowd, particularly at Raven Hill, the whole experience, it's it's pretty, pretty, anyway, this guy's pretty cool. So I, I would say the guys, you know, you get to see that joy from them when they reach the, um, you know, and, 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 and to be honest with you, last year was a, was a, was an interesting transition into senior rugby for me because obviously there's different, balances you've now got guys who are playing like completely for livelihoods families there's different egos there's different ways of guys are coming from different systems particularly in england ireland is very much a very structured system when you're dealing with guys who are coached the same way and have the same kind of feeling about their province and the country england is so different you've got guys from south africa you've got guys from australia you've got got english guys got english guys from the north of england south of england all coached in different ways and Probably for me, then the biggest learning has been how to adapt my coaching and and and, yeah. and the way yeah. you carry yourself and behave at times to suit the different personalities and and um, cultures you're dealing with in the group, which was very different for me because I was in Ireland for oh uh, over twenty years um, and I was in Ulster for nearly all of it. So you know, I've become maybe a little bit institutionalized to to one mm-hmm. one set. So um, yeah, that that. That's kind of how the whole thing has has come together to this point. Oh, fantastic! I mean, you you spoke about Alster a lot. You played over hundred games for Alster, and correct me if I'm not if if I'm not right. You were part of the last Alster squad to win the Pro 14 URC competition, I think. Yeah, we. And yeah, we. They've, they've started like a stormer right now. I mean, they've the whole competition seen 106 tries. No one yeah. seems to care about defense in 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 the URC at the moment. And Alster, the top try scorers, like, talk to me. Where, where do you see Alster, Alster season going this year? I mean, in terms of U, URC, in terms of European, of the European challenge, where do you see them um, um, <clears throat> ranking? I think, I think they'll be, they'll be there or thereabouts again, um, as long as the Stormers don't ruin it. Um, <laughs> it's the Stormers. It's the Stormers. Oh, guys, Benedict, can you please not mince your words? Don't mince your words. It's the Stormers. Thank you. <laughs> couldn't couldn't believe that. I was watching it. That that that, that was not a good afternoon's entertainment. Um, <laughs> so um, the yeah, I, I think the squad's exceptionally strong. I think there's a nice balance in terms of senior and um, and guys who've come through. So I think I think that they've got a nice balance there. Oh, perfect. Kieran, thank you so much for your time. Um, yeah. I'm hoping to see an Alster, uh, an Alster final this year, hopefully against one of the South African teams. Kieran, you've been absolutely amazing, but before we let you go, I genuinely want to find out how influenced you've been by the South African players that, that you've been coaching. Have you managed to pick up any slang words over the past couple of years, or do you remember any that you can share with us? Oh, can you share it? Yeah, so it's... That, that obviously the favorite for you guys is lacquer. I hear this lacquer. a lot. I hear, I hear this a lot. I'm trying to think what else what else has been thrown at me. Uh, it's hard to hard to remember. I'm gonna have to speak to Bobby DeV and see see can I get a little bit more from him. Kieran, that's perfect. Lekker is by far good enough. You've clocked the game. South Africans love you now. And you, my friend, were a lekker interview. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kieran. Perfect. Um, have, a lovely, you have a lovely day. And you. Take care, man. Love you. Cheers. See you All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Cheers. There we go. It's pretty simple. Just like in the game of rugby, you too can get better at playing the bounce in life. How? It's simple. We call it change science. If you want to learn all about it, go here to the change exchange below my guns. Pew, 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 pew. Over here. My guns got no bullets. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> Away. Oh,